We got Jimmy Harrod with the Dodgers witness. We've got a pigeon as the ball is stuck by old Toppin. Oh, come on. I don't know if we get a replay of Topic just incredible. Remember Wedgie? <laughs> <laughs> we talking about Wedgies? Wedgets? Uh, I mean, come on now. Did y'all just see that? It happened quick. And Too bad your team is trash, buddy. During this broadcast, you could have easily missed it. But Obi Toppin just casually dislodged the ball at the top of the backboard. After the game, I had to go and find this clip and rewatch it a few times to make sure I wasn't tripping. And sure enough, I was not. Obi Toppin just touched the top of the backboard. Not that long ago, a feat like this was stuff of legend. We used to hear stories about crazy athletic players from the past being able to pull this well, off, but there was never any video evidence or proof, so we just had to take their word for it, regardless of how unbelievable it sounded. And it always sounded unbelievable. Something that used to be claimed as a feat of superhuman athleticism. And Obi Toppin just jogged up and did it like it was nothing. And almost as crazy as the jump itself is the fact that no one even batted an eye. It didn't really get much of a reaction. No one That's talked that dude, about that dude it reacted. After. Hardly anyone even made note of it. It kind of just came and went. I guess this is just normal now, which got me thinking. Are NBA players today better athletes now than ever before? Yeah. It's obvious by now that the skill Duh. level around the league is at an all-time high. There's no debate there. But are NBA players more athletic than players of the past? Yes. Can they actually jump higher and run faster than players that came before yes. them? That seems to be the general consensus right now. Yes. And it's definitely what my eyes are seeing. But you got a few players like Jordan and uh, 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 Vince Carter and uh, 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 Clyde and Clyde. This may not be the case. It's not? Huh? I mean, Will, obviously. Today's video is sponsored by Sunday's <laughs> Daily Ballers <laughs> Action and And Dr. J. Number one, Max. Number one, Max, Jimmy. With time, inevitably comes evolution. You see it everywhere you look. However, the one area in life where this has been up for debate is the NBA. Fans of past eras claiming the league has regressed was athletic and is too, somehow fat now dude. in a worse state than it was decades ago. But after some I, I, I was was athletic. He can dunk, you know, like six feet tall. It seems most fans generally agree that the league is in fact better now than it was in the past. Shooting is better, Are scoring is more efficient, players more. are more skilled. But does this same logic apply to the actual physical abilities of players? Are today's NBA players better athletes than their predecessors? Well, according to the comment section of any past player's highlight reel, they sure are. Claims that today's players are not just more skilled, but they are far superior athletes. Hey, Connor, they're not far superior athletes, but you saying more skilled and more, um, a little bit more athletic. You had some athletic freeze back in the day as well. I just mentioned them. Bias and nearsighted as this may sound, when watching these games today, it's becoming hard to deny. While watching this year's preseason, it felt like what was once a jaw-dropping feat of athleticism has now become a fairly regular occurrence. Hey, dang, like, I what is this? Christian Brown, a player who is not even regarded as a high flyer, taking off in traffic, head at the rim, gets stuffed by Hartenstein, and they're back off to the races like nothing even happened. Here's a play by Brandon Miller, a skill guy. Why is he catching a body like Prime Blake Griffin? Zach Eady is 7'4", 300 pounds, and the man is catching lobs like he's an athletic stretch four. This is the same guy who coming into the draft was described as a plotter, slow, unathletic. This guy, okay, who's slow. as everything but his athleticism, who's catching the ball from the stratosphere. 7'5", alien, leaning into a double pump? What am I watching? This block by Malik Monk? This is insane. Oh, Malik Monk has always been athletic, man. That's why I like him. He's an athletic and he can shoot. Somewhere there's a career defensive mixtape of Michael Jordan doing the same exact block. Nowadays, this is just another Tuesday in the NBA. None of these Evolution, man. Guys will be using this Chrome extension. What do you think happened to... I feel like I just found a Google He's Use a Chrome extension, Jimmy? The dunk contest is not as exciting anymore, bro. Why do you think the dunk contest is not as exciting anymore? Everybody used to go crazy with dunk contest back in the day. Nowadays, like, man, it's man. Meh. Nah.
From seen it before. We've seen it before. A week's worth of preseason games. We've seen it so much before. Career highlight tape. They're not really noteworthy in today's game. In fact, despite their incredible physical tools, some of these players aren't even on an NBA team at the moment. We do this back in like the early 2000s, 1990s, bro. Everyone's going crazy. Are NBA players today athletically superior to players of the past? According to years worth of data across not just basketball, but many sports, the answer time and time again is no. Anatomical and physical evolution frogs, greyhounds, we're not, thro not frogs, we're Most humans. Measurable metrics suggest that there's little to no improvement on athleticism of athletes today versus athletes 20 Ew, or 30 years ago. Most of what little improvement has been made can you as athletes Ew, why toes like that? Years ago. How you got the uh, uh, second toe on top of your big toe like that? Ugh. Most of what How do people do that? Has been made can usually be attributed to better training, better nutrition. I saw LeBron toes food. in the little doctor. Man, his his second toe is on top of his big toe. How how do you get it stuck like that? Meant. But when it comes to the NBA specifically, what exactly does the data say? And how much athletic progression has there been over the last 20 or 30 years, if any at all? Here is a graph of the average vertical leap of every NBA draftee since 2000. Unfortunately, there isn't any publicly available data on draft classes before 2000, but still, this is a quarter century worth of data. And throughout the last 25 years and nearly 1,500 players, there has been a slight increase in leaping ability of players around the league. In 25 years, the average vertical leap in the NBA has increased by about 3 inches, or about 8% higher than it was 25 years ago. Which isn't much, but it is notable considering the sample size. However, However, three inches of leaping ability does not explain the elevation in gameplay and acrobatics that we see in the NBA today compared to where it was nearly three decades Ooh. ago. In fact, an 8% increase around the league could be attributed to simply the optimization of athletics rather than the athletes themselves. As previously mentioned, equipment, training, and nutrition. What is interesting though is that 25 years ago there was a distinct separation in explosiveness from position to position different skill sets for different roles on the court. But in recent years, the test results across all positions have converged. Perimeter players on average indistinguishable from one another, and big men just slightly behind. One side effect of a positionless league is the merging of skills regardless of size. But inadvertently, this has also caused the merging of actual physical abilities regardless of size and alleged position. The NBA Combine also conducts an agility? agility drill, where oh, players right. are tested on their lateral quickness and mobility. How fast can you cover space while cutting and changing direction? And in this metric, players have also gotten slightly more athletic over the last 25 years. And when I say slightly, I mean by just 3%, or 0.3 seconds better since 2000. An average that has gotten consistently better over the years, but by a negligible amount. Not nearly enough of a discrepancy to make any conclusions about better athletes in the NBA today than even 25 years ago. The Combine's sprint drill is as simple as it sounds. Sprint three quarters of the court as fast as you can. And in this test, NBA players lies. have, again, not really changed at all since 2000. No measurable progress in flat out speed across the NBA over the last 25 years. Which means across three different tests of athletic ability conducted by over a thousand NBA players over the course of nearly three decades, the NBA is somewhere between three to eight percent more athletic than it previously was. Told which you. is a long shot from the claims of superior athleticism. No, no, that's it. No, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's what I just said. It's not athletic, but not superior, bro. But possibly the most definitive answer to this question comes from a company that specializes in this Spectrum? exact field. Spectrum. In 2023, Ross Anderson of The Atlantic wrote a piece exploring... The what a struggle today in the NBA and if the data backs up what our eyes are seeing that players today we don't are deny better these. athletes than players of the past and within his investigation he got in touch with P3 a company that specializes in optimizing the performance of athletes at P3 they use state of the art technology to gather real time data on athletes and then conduct an analysis to find areas in which they can improve athletically and in the process they have amassed some of the most comprehensive data sets on these athletes and their physical capabilities. What kind of dust laboratory stuff is this? Production, power, and overall movement and speed. 
Now, according to P3, two thirds of NBA players who suited up last season have worked out at their facility, which gives P3 incredibly detailed Malcolm data on the majority know that of players is. around the league. And according to the data, today's average NBA athlete is four to 7% better than the average NBA athlete from more than 10 years ago which lines up with the data that we gathered from the NBA Combine. And it gives us great evidence that NBA players today, even if it isn't much, are better athletes than the players of the past. But Marcus Elliott, founder and director of P3, says this progress is a matter of performance optimization, not necessarily an evolution of the athletes themselves. Stating that when he began evaluating players about 15 years ago, many were operating at only 75 to 80% of their potential athleticism. Whereas today, players are operating at closer to 90% of their potential. But the extra 5 to 10% boost in athleticism over the course of a couple decades doesn't explain what we're actually seeing on the court and how it appears like players of today are far superior athletes than players of yesterday. So if NBA players have statistically only gotten marginally more explosive and agile over the last few decades, and all of the data says there isn't That's much cool. evidence to prove otherwise, how do we explain the leap in physical abilities from today's players that we are actually seeing? Well, in order to answer this question, we need to redefine how we perceive and measure <laughs> athleticism. He Despite look mad the years that have passed, Michael Jordan and the way he played remains an outlier in the timeline of basketball, where many players of the past have a game that aesthetically isn't so favorable through the lens of 2024. Michael's acrobatics are to this day a spectacle, and that is a perk exclusive to a man that was arguably the best athlete in the history of the league. But have you ever seen MJ attempt an East Bay? It's an easy bay. Oh, between the legs? Oh. Well, it's kind of weird. This footage is from 1989, during Michael's athletic peak. He's got hands the size of baseball mitts, six feet six inches tall. His vert is well over 40 inches, and yet he struggled to throw down a dunk that has become fairly routine. In all in season, the NBA all season 1989, he's a, luck, he's a light handed dunker. You've never seen Michael Jordan dunk with his left hand, though. But Michael had all of the physical tools to easily pull off an East Bay. And I have absolutely no doubt that he could. After all, this is just one missed attempt. But this clip demonstrates that maybe it's not the athleticism that has gotten better over the years, but rather the way players use their athleticism. This is Orlando Woolridge, and he was the first Remember him off 2K. player to pull off an East Bay in the NBA dunk contest back in 1984. Of course, this dunk existed before 1984, but it wasn't something players would regularly attempt, let alone pull off, even for the league's highest flyers. It's, but over time, the East Bay, I just say between the legs. dunk became more popular, almost like a measuring stick of elite jumping ability. Fast forward 15 years, and a simple East Bay would get you tens across the board in the NBA Facts. dunk contest. Nowadays, I want to get you by a four. In the late 90s and early 2000s. That's a good warm-up dunk. This dunk hardly even turns heads. Yep. Players are doing this in games. High school players who aren't nearly as explosive as a prime MJ are doing this dunk. Not because they are jumping higher or are more agile than their predecessors, but because players today have been taught and trained on how to maximize, optimize, and use their physical tools to a far greater extent than players of the past. Oftentimes, players of the past possess all of the explosiveness Dang, and ability to pull that. off what we see in the league today. They just didn't know how to use it. At least not like today's athletes do. And according to countless studies regarding this topic, this is the prevailing theory, utilization and optimization of pre-existing physical abilities. The highlights and jaw-dropping feats of athleticism that we see far more often from players today aren't a result of them being more athletic, but rather having the skills and abilities to do more with their athleticism. The extra five to 10% of measurable improvement of athletic ability may explain some of this, but the evolution of specialized training and skill is the driving force here. A player in the 90s may have had all the physical tools to slice up a defense, cut through the lane, and put together a clip for their highlight reel, but without the skills to keep the ball in front of them along the way, those physical tools are essentially watered down to a slower, less explosive alternative. Rising above a defender for a poster is a feat of athleticism, but so is the combo a player put together to break their defender and get to the rim in the first place. Without the skills to initiate the highlight, there is no highlight. And as the skill level Ooh. around the league has jumped dramatically over time, so have all of the displays of athletic ability. 
big men of the past may have had the vertical leap to go and catch a lob 12 feet in the air, but without the body control, play style, or constant high pick and roll action that we see today, they never really get the opportunity to put this athleticism on display. For example, Giannis Antetokounmpo is a freak of nature, and we know this because every other possession he comes barreling down the lane and shows off his incredible speed, over, dude. vert, and strength. His athleticism is always on full display. But if Giannis played back in 1995, what how happened? likely is it that he gets relegated to the low post, restricted yeah. to hook shots, and having his back Oh, yeah, to yeah, the yeah, he ain't doing nothing. He ain't dribbling. See what they say? Oh, Giannis was dominating there. He's, uh, first of all, he wouldn't be bringing the ball up the court. They just tell him, get your ass in the paint, bro, and do hook shots and whatnot, and dunk the ball. He ain't, he ain't driving with rebounds. Give it to the point guard. If he try, if he just tries to do something, like if he try to get the rebound, try to take coast to coast, and something bad happens, he's going to get subbed out instantly. Them coaches, them coaches back in the day, they don't play. They don't play. They don't play. You a point guard, you bring the ball up the court. If you're a center, or Giannis Height used to get in the paint, always. He they don't play. He to the low post, restricted to hook shots and having his back to the basket on most possessions. Yeah. If he isn't granted the opportunity to learn how to handle the ball and be a They're not going to teach him that, no. Nope. They're not going to teach him that, no. Nope. They let Barkley pass because he's 6'4". Barkley's 6'4". Yon's like 6'11". Get in the paint, bro. <laughs> get in the paint or else you're benched. Often would he get a full head of steam to attack the basket and show off his physical tools? Similar to Giannis, David Robinson was a freak of nature. But outside of the occasional fast break or lob to the rim, there wasn't nearly as many opportunities for fans to witness the full extent of his freakish abilities. Even playstyle itself can play a deceptive role on how we view athleticism of certain players. In the 2008 NBA game, Russell Westbrook recorded a max vertical leap of 36.5 inches, not nearly as high as you would expect from seemingly one of the most explosive athletes in NBA history. Ten years later, Grayson Allen, a far cry from what you would consider to be an elite jumper, recorded a max. You can't skip this ad, but you can skip the line. Go to vote.org to learn how to vote today. I'm always shopping. I'm gonna skip this. He's about the real world. I'm gonna shop at the real world. Every day. Gucci, Rolex. Max Vert of 40.5 inches. In fact, Grayson Allen tested better than Westbrook in every single drill in the combine. <gasps> and even knowing this, there isn't a soul on earth who would say he is a better athlete than Westbrook was. Because while Westbrook was playing above the rim, Grayson Allen was well, shooting threes. threes. Yeah. If I were to ask you who was the most explosive athlete Curry can dunk? Stephen Curry and Blake, I know Curry did not just dunk. You, who was the most explosive athlete between Stephen Curry and Blake Griffin? The answer would be painfully obvious. Except most fans would get it wrong. Because in the 2009 Combine, their results were virtually identical. <laughs> 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 Blake was actually more agile than Steph in the agility drill, and Steph somehow clocked the same max vert as Blake did. Athleticism and same sprint. we as fans identify it can be a very misleading thing. Yeah, it kind of. Even his numbers up. This is the part it. where numbers lie. When a player the in the NBA makes a crazy layup, this is often a result of skill opening the door for athleticism, not the other way around. Yep. Knowing how to utilize the angles, how to attack a defender, how to move your body and get the best look at a shot. These are all skills that have been developed, skills that are far beyond the average player of the past, and skills that allow players to actually use their athleticism to their full potential. And when we watch this, it appears to be more athletic than what we saw in the past, because it is. But not in any quantifiable way that can be measured through a vert test or an agility drill. Without the ball in their hands, NBA players today are almost indiscernible from players of 25 years ago. There's almost no measurable difference between them. But give them the ball, some space, and a play style that emphasizes their abilities. And very quickly, the gap between what they are able to pull off on the court becomes clear as day. But this isn't KG. to discount players of the past. Payton. There were countless Cap. players who would be top tier athletes in any generation. And the ones who had the skills to complement their athleticism prove that the NBA has always been loaded with great athletes. However, the number of players he who were able to reach their full athletic the potential without the training, the technology, equipment, and knowledge that yeah, players mean, They don't know how to time their dunks. They're in the 90s, bro. There's no such thing as PlayStation back then or Xbox. Today have. 
was far less, leading to a league that appeared to be far less. Yeah, they athletic. don't know what the X button is. is they don't today. know how to time it. Are NBA players today better athletes than players of the past? Well, technically, yeah, but not in the way that we have been led to believe. No, I mean, not significantly. Yeah, they better, but like you did, he just did it by like four percent at best. Haven't evolved athletically. They don't jump much higher or run much faster than the players that came before them. But with the benefit of decades of advancements and how we measure, train, that and- That food look good with some beans. That's some with beans. A oh, big back time, man. Now we like some good pasta and some beans right here. Benefit of de decades of advancements and how we measure, train, and improve athletes. Today's NBA players Jared, have Jack? optimized their athleticism far more than players of the past. They understand their bodies and abilities more, and they have been meticulously trained to know exactly how to get the most out of them. The extra 5 to 10% of measurable increase in athletic performance may have something to do with the incredible plays we are now spoiled with. But many of these athletic feats can be attributed to Dang! a developed skill and complementary play style that is that much more up? difficult to measure. Athletically, over time, NBA players haven't changed much at all. But how they use their athleticism, that is the evolution. So it is an evolution. Whoop!